All right, the recording is on right now. First of all, what, who, who are we? Like, you know, I, I probably know, most of you probably heard me this, that, you know, I did my introduction many times. Jobscoshare.org started with a reason. Uh, I myself uh, came, I'm a uh, kind of immigrant. I came from Pakistan in 2003. And, uh, you know, I started with just like, you know, busboy jobs. So as a busboy, uh, I was pretty young at that time. And I was like, okay, you know what? This is something that I don't have to do this for life. Now, I'm not saying busboy is a bad job or anything like that, but I felt like I could do much better than that, right? So this is where I kind of like started studying on my own and finding information on my own. But the problem was that I was too new to the U.S. and the confidence level was extremely low. That when I was going for this career, there's so much gap inside the learning. Even if you go to the colleges, if you take uh, courses from like, you know, certification focused type of courses, there's too much gap in it. You get the certification, you get the paper, but nobody teaches you real world stuff. And when you go to the interview, then you expect that they're going to ask me something about what is RAM, what is ROM, or what is a computer, what is operating system. Then they'll throw something like ticketing system on you, Active Directory on you, Office 365 on you, imaging on you, deployment on you, none of that stuff. Back in the days, where nobody was teaching that stuff. Now they're kind of like putting little by little because they see that there are people that are kind of pissed off from this type of learning. And me, myself, when I went to college, and I was like, what did I learn in, the, in this course that all this instructor did? And nothing bad about instructor. They did give me a lot of information. But what was it? Like, it was just slides going through. And once we were done with the slides, we went for the exam. And we just did some kind of like, you know, a cheat sheet, you know, look at the username. Uh, sorry, you look at the questions and password um, and all that kind of stuff. And basically, we passed the exam, right? And most of you are in this case, too, where a lot of people come to jobscashare.org and say, hey, I got MCSA. I got Network Plus, I got this certification, I got these huge certification, but I can really land a job and I have no clue how to use this certification. So long story short, this Active Directory is a piece of training that we do in a live training. And I think Majid is, is our current member who took our live training yesterday, he finished it, phase one. So you are actually taking, out of that phase one, you're taking one skill and i'm teaching this for free on the youtube and this can be put it up, put, this will be put on youtube and you guys are a part of this so jobs could share story started like that it started from an issue a problem which i wanted to fix and of course it's not just me there are so many other people now like hadi wali he's a security expert aws certified and he went through the same stuff in his site and, you know, that's how he uh, kind of like also felt like I want to be a part of this platform. And there's so many who are like, you know, in this platform, they're, they're helping us with, 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 you know, combining all these gaps between certification learning, between college learning and the real world skills learning. So the, the most important thing for me from this training is that how much real world training can I give you in this short training? But of course, it's not going to be complete. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty uh, short training, right? So... If we look at it, where does it, where does it, like, how do we, when, when we train, where do we put that on the resume? So when we train live training, you guys are actually training about this right now. So if you guys have any questions, just open up your mic and ask me, okay, about some things that I'm just straight up showing you like a resume and you're like, okay, I'm, I don't get it. So you see that the training that I'm teaching you guys is basically covering this Active Directory user management. And where is it going to help you? It's going to help you when you open up a descriptions, indeed.com, and you look for information like, you know, help desk, entry level help desk, IT support. So in that, usually they will have this section in there that says, you guys need to know about Active Directory. You guys need to know about creating users, passwords, stuff like that. And when you go to the interview, that's where this is going to help you. This is what we are covering today. So in our live training, when we start, we start with a pretty big training, but we, are, we basically set up a domain controller and then we work on Active Directory. So you guys are in this session right now where we set up a domain controller and then we also look into some, in, in day two, we basically teach about tools to manage Active Directory and a whole training on Active Directory. Now, sometimes in our live training, we miss some of the, these things and then we basically send videos to our members. So in this training, we will be kind of like doing very quick type of uh, you know, domain setup then you guys will be setting up accounts. Then we'll be practicing some password resets. Then we'll be getting some scripts and stuff like that. So of course, this training will go a little bit more than one hour.
So if you feel like you want to stay, you can stay. If you feel like you don't want to stay, you can leave and then we will send you the video and it will be on YouTube too, okay? So before we start, we need to understand Active Directory as a whole. So when I say Active Directory, what does that mean? Can, you, can someone give me an answer? Like when I say Active Directory environment, domain environment, what am I talking about? Uh, a domain is typically is like a group of computers in a workplace in which you manage the access or you know possibly the computers, which is what I know so far. I'm I'm just getting into the intro. No, that's perfect because a domain is very important. And the reason I started with Active Directory live training because without Active Directory, you will not be able to do your job. Eighty percent of the time, you will not be able to do your job. Why? Because you always, when you get a job, you're in a domain connected environment. People don't hire you if they have five computers, right? Why would they hire a help desk and pay 40, 40 to fifty thousand dollars for for managing five computers when they can manage them themselves, right? You they would hire you because they're in the business environment and you know it's uh, we're training you for more corporate level type of um, businesses. There are three hundred people, four hundred people, or you become you work with a company who's working with the smaller offices then. Even though if you're managing five people then, but you're not managing only five, you're managing, let's say, 15 companies with five people, right? So you got to know Active Directory and domain and what's the difference between a work group, what's the difference between a domain connected. So if I ask you all a question, in your home, you have a laptop and you're connected from a mobile devices. Is that a domain environment or is that a work group environment? Can somebody give me an answer? It's a work group environment. Yes, it's a work group environment. So if you have a phone or you have a laptop at home, you see only you can log in or you can add somebody else to that computer. Let's say your brother, your sister, whoever, and they can log in then, right? Whoever bought it first, you got the admin account. Then you add account to that computer, the same computer, and then they, your, your home members can log into that computer. But if your home member, another member, let's say brother or sister, they bought a laptop, can you log into that laptop without knowing the password? No, right? You can't. You really need to hack into it then. And that's not legally right. That's not morally right. right? That's not right. That's not how, how we're doing things right here. So, so basically, that's a work group environment. And what are the challenges behind this then? Because you cannot manage that machine. So what if, let's say, everybody goes on a vacation and they need something on those computers, right? This is something that you guys are doing for whatever reason, and they need something on their computers. Everybody needs to send you their username and password and think about it. It will become a pretty messy job if you're working in a, in a company that has 300 computers now, and they want a file or something to be done to those computers. Are you going to go to each and every computer trying to manage them? Of course not, right? You need something managed. For that management, you need a domain controller. And domain controller is a normal server operating system. It could be 2012, 2016, 2018, sorry, 2019. There's no 2018, by the way. 2019. So you put Active Directory on top of that server, and that's where it becomes a domain controller. Do you guys do you guys get this? And of course, we're gonna do this lab right now, so you will get it even more. So, so, mm -hmm. so the domain controller basically uh, manages the the domain essentially. So yeah, the domain controller manages all your computers, all your users, all your groups. Everything is being managed in that one machine, and okay. that's where you can say, then okay, I wanna I wanna let uh, you know Katie log into the other machine. So you can just add Katie to Active Directory and Katie can then go to other machine in that work environment and she can just log in if you allow her, right? So you see the you see how you're managing it from just one place. It makes it super easy for you to manage ten thousand computers if you want to, ten thousand users if you want to, right? Got it. Okay. So if you look at this image right now um, in front of you, it says work group. You see how work group is connected to just one network. It could be a switch, it could be a router, whatever it is, but it's connected to one network and it's not being managed. There's no management in between. Everybody's, they got the internet, that's great. They can log in themselves. We already explained that. So the domain uh, you know, network looks something like this. 
as you can see right now on your screen, you guys, there's a directory server. That's also like a domain server. People will ask you in the interview, can you tell me about domain, domain connected environment? Or they'll tell you, can you tell me about Active Directory? Or they may say, do you know anything about client server network? You see how they're naming it client server network? That is what it means basically. You are, you're in a managed network, right? So you have computers like this and then what is Active Directory? Now this is a text base. You guys should learn this or just type it down or maybe next time when you are watching this video, you should be able to say something more like this. It's a directory service available with Windows Server Platform. Remember, we're talking about Windows here. We're not talking about Linux. Windows Server Platform, it stores information in a central database and allow users to have single account called the domain user account. So you see, if I say, you know, Gene, are you, when I put you in Active Directory, is that a work group account or is that a domain user account? That is a domain user account, right? Of that network. So here we have an example of an office where you can see there on the left side, there's an executive office, there's an IT administration office, office one, office two, this could be marketing, sales, whatever, whatever, and there's a lobby. And on the right side, there's a support guys right there, and then there's a, a networking room right there. So this is how a normal environment looks like. Now, this is one floor. You can make it bigger if you want to, but they will have multiple floors for people, right? You're still managing it from one place then. So that's how you do kind of your IT, like a real world corporate environment looks like this. It, it can just go grow more, that's it. You will be working with different, com different companies or different service providers. If it's too huge, then of course, you're gonna have layers and layers of IT people working with you. Uh, and that is something that we discuss in our first, uh, first day of training about roles and everything. That, that's not something that I wanna cover here today. But just to give you a clear idea that you, in a work group, uh, sorry, in a corporate level environment, you're working in an office like this where you have your office and you manage computers from one place. Okay? So now we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to move into, so basically this is, I'm actually using a live uh, training uh, slide. So I'm going to move you guys to Active Directory. I'm going to skip through the help desk ticketing system part, but I wanted to show this image before I move on to the Active Directory session. So you see, if you look at it, how do you get, like if you start working in the company tomorrow and they will give you a computer and the computer will be already connected to the do, uh, domain controller, it will be all, things will be already done for you. So then for you when, you, when you're so new to the technology, you feel like there's too much behind this, like that happened. How did this person create my machine? There's too much they have configured for you. So today you're, you're learning to be like a help desk who can configure your own machine. So when you go to work tomorrow, you're not stressed that how did this whole thing happen? At least you have some practical idea of how things are happening and you can also use the tools and things like that to make your job easy. Usually in a company what happens is something like this. You, you, get, you have a user, user will have issue, they will call, they will email, they will use web portal, they will use chat, and then they will do what? They will send an issue, right? Then you, what, what do you do? You use ticketing system, which is in our, in our day one, we use ticketing system for live training, just like what I'm doing live training today for Active Directory, we do ticketing system training. And in that, you basically open up a ticket, and then let's say if it's an issue about user being locked out, then what do you do? You assign that to yourself, and then you resolve that issue in Active Directory, you come back to the ticketing system, you close it. As a help desk person, as an IT person, or an entry level, whatever you wanna call yourself, 80% of your performance is based on how you close tickets, how you open tickets, how you close tickets, how you assign tickets. That's 80% of your job. Think about that. So because without you, fun, um, uh, companies cannot function, right? You're the main person assigning things. You're, you're, the, you're the real important person for the company. So that's why they're very picky. Yeah, there are a lot of jobs there, but they're very picky on picking people. And that's why people struggle if they cannot answer about ticketing system, if they cannot answer about Active Directory, if they cannot answer about Office 365, deployments, basic troubleshooting, they're not gonna give you a job, especially these days, nowadays, things are very hybrid. It's not just a normal CompTIA plus kind of thing and you're good to go. So that's where things really like, that's the background of it. So now I'm gonna fast forward and just kind of move into Active Directory session right here. 
All right. So if you guys are looking at my screen right now, because I teach reality and I just straight go to jobs. And that's how I create the trainings. That's how all of our trainings are based on. We, we look at the description in current market and we change our training, agile type of training. So we change our content. It's, it changes all the time. So you look at this. If you, if you search about Active Directory in the Indeed.com, why people want to learn about this, this is the reason. Look at the titles on the left side. It says help desk technician, help desk technician, IT support, IT field technician, anything IT support, you need to know about Active Directory. And they specifically put it in the description right there. It says create new user, new user accounts, manage those accounts in Active Directory. And of course, they can put exchange, whatever they want to add. But most of the people will have something like Active Directory in there. Okay. And, and they will either put something like domain or, well, most of the people will use Active Directory specifically. So when you go to the interview and you say that, hey, you know, I have done a training on Active Directory user management and everything. That's too, That's very different than you going there, I have A+, plus because A+, plus does not cover Active Directory like this. So when they start asking you a question, after this training, you should be very comfortable. So, so far, any question about this whole lecture that I'm doing, any, any things that is coming to you right now? Quick question. Uh-huh. So I currently work in a uh, cybersecurity office in which we have a systems administrator. Uh -huh. And he's the one who manages the Active Directory as well as, you know, using the ticketing system. Is a is a systems administrator the same as an IT help desk technician? Yeah, so it depends on the company. How, like for example, uh, an Active Directory job normally is a help desk job, right? Like because you're you, you're adding a user, resetting a password. I'm having an issue with my password, lockout. But some companies may may kind of lock it down a little bit more. They don't want uh, people to be logging into Active Directory because there's too much can happen with it if you have access. But it depends on how the company structure is because a system administrator can then really define access at Active Directory level. Like I just want you guys to only access certain groups in Active Directory and that's it. You cannot access any, anything else. And that's how the uh, real, uh, in the companies, that's how things are done as a system. And like, for example, my clients, if they tell me to build an Active Directory for them, then I'll say, okay, how many groups do you have? Do you have system administrator, you have security administrator, you have network engineer, you have help desk, and then I will make a group by group access. So you see, you still get access to Active Directory, but only at the level of users, right? Okay, so it's like uh, your, your access is managed based upon where you are in the company as far as structure. Exactly, the structure. And then, like I said, it, it, it doesn't have to be always like this. It's up to the mm -hmm. companies. And once, sometimes maybe some, some people will say that, no, we just don't want any Active Directory mm -hmm. stuff with help this. They can do the ticketing, no problem, right? Got it. All right. So here's a real uh, ticket. Because I like, when, I like to, when I train, I basically take this, uh, a real ticket out and then I just train like this, basically. So it says, Kimberly Moore, first day is on April Monday, uh, 30th. Please send her computer outlook. Her office is 3 to 1. Is it okay if I schedule time or orientation, blah, blah, blah? Okay. So even though you, if you started a job right now and I ask you, look at this, this ticket right now, and you may be like, what does, it have, does that have to do with Active Directory, right? That would be you having no experience, right? Because if you look at this clearly, they need Kimberly Moore first day is 30th. So what, they didn't even define Active Directory. They don't know about anything about Active Directory. Yeah, users, user will not be saying Active Directory, right? They're just gonna say, we have a new user. But you as a technician should look at it and say, okay, we got Kimberly Moore starting on April 30th, right? So what do you, what do you need to do? You need to go to the Active Directory. You need to create an account, right? Now you may ask me, how would I know? How do I need to name this and that, this kind of stuff right here? That's something you have to talk to your manager. They will tell you that we're gonna be using this naming connection in, in, in Active Directory, so you're gonna be using K more. That is gonna be the account. Kimberly, first name, last name, and then the date, and then also it says Office 321. Now in Active Directory, you also need to define office numbers in there because that's how other application then look at Active Directory and grab that information from there, right? So even though it, it doesn't look like there's nothing about Active Directory, but it, it's, there's two things about Active Directory right there, and a computer too. So there's three things that it got assigned to you automatically. You look at it, okay, that's my job right there. Account, computer, and then adding information in that account. So that's a ticket right there. 
and you need to resolve it. So if you're brand new, you look at it and you're sitting there and they're like, and you say that I have some experience and you just put something on your resume, which I, peop I tell people don't do that. But if you put like five years of resume and you go there, they don't expect to come and teach you then, right? Because you put five years of experience in your resume. So if you, if, you don't, if you say that I'm an entry level, I just did some training, then they're more open to you. To, okay, you know what? I think let me teach you a little bit about Active Directory here. And they will teach you this stuff on the job too. But it, if you know it, then that's great, right? Basically, the key word you're looking for. Hi, I'm Hadi. I work with Danish been for 12 years. So basically what the keyword you're looking for is called documentation, right? So if you know how to document things, you can also look at it in a way like, okay, this person knows how to document things. So like going back to the ticketing system, it's all about documenting how you well you document because the next person who's going to see the ticket will also going to be following up on what you did previously. So if you have a good skills in documenting and, and writing logs, they're like, okay, this is a good thing. And you can also mention that, look, my documentation skills include this, 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 and so on and so forth. And trust me, in the long way, you will appreciate it yourself because sometimes the ticket after like maybe a couple of days will come back to you and you won't know what happened or which engineer worked on it. So I, I always tell my, my friends, my coworkers that, Hey, whatever you do, even if you click somewhere on the screen, just document it on the ticket or somewhere where I can see what you did so I can backtrack it and follow up on it. So would that uh, basically mean that you're going to document each step that you take? So say, you know, you log onto the computer. But yeah, so a lot of times what happened is like for me, I'm in, I used to be a system engineer and I had a log that would always pop up in the beginning of my logging screen. It would pop up for everyone. And if they updated something, they clicked on something like, for example, if it's a really sensitive server and they clicked on something to open up a file and close it, those things, okay, not really need to be documented. But if you clicked on something that had an action to it, yeah, make sure you documented that, hey, I clicked on this. A pop up and this is a result and things like that now you don't have to click uh, document every single move like oh i moved my mouse to the left or the right yeah. like, you just need to document like if you clicked on something that had an impact or you made a little modification or you change the font size whatever it just helps the next engineer now, in an example i can give you in terms of active directory uh, you may come across an issue by adding a person to like say domain controller right active directory and you may come across an issue and you find a solution on internet now another technician comes in and they do the same process and they they're having issues so they have some type of document that they can look into right but of course most of the time it's a simple process that people know about it right and if they have to tell you something different then that's going to be the documentation that we're talking about is the naming like they'll put a different name out there right they say you need to use k more or you need to use the three letters of your first name and three letters of your last name, right? And the date of birth. So that's that's the company's policy, structural policy to use naming convention, right? So you need to know that stuff ahead of the time. So you will basically ask the managers over there that, hey, I'm, I wanna add this person, what is the naming policy? What is the naming convention policy in this company, right? Or you can go to the actual directory and find out yourself by looking at the accounts, right? So, of course, then we can go on and on with this. This is our live training and, and we basically kind of like, you know, train like this and we put more uh, real world examples. And this example is a, is a template ticket. So that was just an email. This is a, this is a ticket coming from directly from a web portal, a ticketing system. So that converts into an email. And then you see is on the bottom, they just want to update the title of a director. So Active Directory can create so many calls for you. You can be just hired for Active Directory stuff if it's a big company. Let's say if this company have 10,000 people. They're going to get a lot of calls, right? And maybe you just got hired to do this type of job where you need to change a title for a director. You need to, to, to add a person, reset their password. People got locked out. There's so much you can do in Active Directory, right? And if it's a big company, then you're working on that specifically. If it's a small company, then yeah, you move on to other things like troubleshooting, remote troubleshooting, and all that kind of stuff. Okay. All right. So, so of course we got more tickets here again. So let, let's talk about. All right. Let me let me let if you come in. Okay. So you see the Active Directory. The main part for you guys to learn about Active Directory is what are you going to manage in Active Directory? Like you said, Gene, that 
that's something system administrator was working on that company. Now they may be working on the higher level, meaning they may be doing policies, they may be creating groups, they may be creating OUs, a lot of different things they can create in Active Directory. And also they may be working with the bigger environments where Active Directories are replicating. That's more system admin job. Where one Active Directory wins down, another one is up, and now this needs to he needs to configure, make sure that what happened here because he doesn't want the other Active Directory to go down or his whole company will go down, right? So that is more a sysadmin level job right there at the back end. They're checking the logs, they are creating domain controllers, all that kind of stuff, right? And I'm going to show you that in a second, what sysadmin do and then how it turns over to you guys, okay? So mainly you guys are in Active Directory manages user, groups, and computers. So if you go to the interview and somebody asks you, what level of information do you know about Active Directory after this training? Then you can say, yeah, we manage users in there, we manage computers in there, and we manage groups in there and anything related to that then. it could be a user changing password name whatever right groups changing adding a groups adding people to group groups added to another groups computers changing computers deleting computers blocking computers all that kind of stuff needs to be done in Active Directory okay so this is how the Active Directory looks like I'm sure you, most of you guys already know the Active Directory is like this so if I ask you any one of you Tell me what is the domain name of this Active Directory environment. If you look at this screen, can somebody tell me? Jobskills.org Jobs 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 is a domain name right there. That's correct. So when you join a company, you're going to first open up Active Directory and look at that name. So now, not all, not all the time, it's going to be like a website type of name. They may use like headquarter.jobskillshare.org so nobody else knows about it, right? CEC, whatever they want to name it, they will name it over there, okay? So, our lecture part is over. Now we're going to jump into the lab. Before that, does anybody have a question, anything to do with the lecture? I want to ask you something about the Active Directory. It's supposed to be as a backbone of the system. Okay. So, it's supposed to be the access is limited to the system administration. Because I can, anyone can play it or do something wrong about it for editing people or create account like this. Because I, what I understand now, it's same like you can control all the system, like the backbone of the company. Yes, and that's why you need Active Directory. You can control everything in Active Directory, um, like you know, specifically at the user level, computer level. But then after that, there's another piece to it too. Once you have Active Directory up and running, it opens up another features in your server, like group policy. Like for example, if you say that, I don't want people to be changing their wallpapers. Now, Active Directory is not doing that. But through Active Directory access, there's another feature called group policy. That, that gets deep inside the computer then. Then you use that feature, which is not a part of this training, but I'll show it to you guys. Then this is why you use Active Directory, but then you have this other feature in the server that uses Active Directory kind of like that access, and it goes to really, really like tiny, tiny type of things. I don't want people to right click here. I don't want people to change this. I don't want people to change the wallpaper. I want people to lock out after seven tries when they type their password seven times. I'm going to show you that because that's important for Active Directory. And you see that these are the things. So it, it opens up more to you once you are in the domain. And yeah, those things are usually defined by your organization and yeah. your company and policy. So you won't be doing anything policy related. You'll be just following the rules and regulations of your company. Okay. Uh, kind of help out on that. The, so the sysadmin would create the groups um, as a help desk person. You would just assign those groups to the computer. But say it again. Sorry, I, I didn't understand. So the sysadmin would create the groups, uh, but as a help desk person, you would just assign those groups to the computers and the users. Yeah. So um, if I'm if I'm understanding correctly, so basically a sysadmin will let's say create the whole directory environment, right? He's going to create a server, put Active Directory on, and then he's going to say that this is a help desk administrator group, right? Then you get hired, and they will add you to that group. So that group will have specific permissions to do certain type of management, like resetting a password for users, adding new computers. So yeah, you will have ability to add more machines and everything, but you won't have ability to delete Active Directory or specific things that they don't want you to touch, right? So that's kind of like controlled 
uh, uh, control access that sysadmin can do before they even let you get into the Active Directory. Make sense? Uh, I, just, I just wanted to confirm. Uh, so jobskillshare.org is the domain overall, and then underneath the in the drop down menu, those are going to be the groups assigned within the domain. Yeah, that's that's. Oh. Yeah, so if jobskillshare.org is a company right now, physically, let's say this is a company, right? And mm -hmm. I have physical computers and servers, everything will be shown in here, in that in front of the screen that you guys are seeing. It's gonna show in under the computer. Uh, users are gonna show under users. So let's say Hadi's my employee, he's gonna show under users, right? If you are the employee, you're gonna, show, you're gonna be shown in the user, but that's just a generic folder. You can create more if you want to, and then you can, put, uh, you can apply policies on top of these uh, groups then that I want certain people to be accessing certain things, and that's where you get really more, like refine it more uh, for organizations. Got it. So if everybody's looking at my screen, can you guys confirm that you guys have direct access to your lab like this? Yep. Yeah. Yep, yes. All right, so now there's two things right here that I want you guys to understand. Help this is you. I gave you this machine so then you will become a part of my company. Now on the bottom, you guys see the remote company abc.com, right? Everybody see that? DC 300, staff 300, staff 300B, system administrator? Oh yeah, I see yep. that. Okay, so now on the bottom, this is the company that we're talking about. I am the system administrator, for example, and let's say we have some conversation going on between me and CEO and I'm like, hey man, I'm too tired doing all the stuff you need to hire help this right this is how it actually it happens in the companies right that's where help this like you know the 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 job gets created like that or if it's a too big company of course they have a better way to do it but smaller companies medium companies they, they get help this like that a system administrator get frustrated I, I can't do the servers and search security and everything all by my own man you need to hire another person right and usually people leave or they the ceo say okay i will hire another person so Let's suppose in abc.com, I'm a system administrator and I was assigned the task to create my work group environment into what? You guys need to give me these names now, domain controller, because interview, that is what people want to hear, okay? Domain controller, Active Directory. So right now, this abc.com is not a company that has any domain stuff. This is just names right there. We're going to create it. So I want you guys to, when I do things, I want you to make sure you guys follow me. Now you won't be able to do anything in the abc.com because that's kind of like controlled right there, right? Then I will let you control things. So then you, just like what we talk about, then it becomes more of like a practical thing to learn. That like, okay, that's how I get access in the real companies, right? We're gonna go to the, the, the domain controller machine and somebody asked me yesterday a really good question. They say that in interview, somebody opened up a computer like this in front of them and, did, and then asked them, is this a work group computer or is this a domain connected computer? Can you tell me? So this could be your technical question right now in the interview. Tell me guys, if you guys look at this screen right now, is this work group or domain? It looks like a uh, work group to me because there's no option to uh, you know, sign in as a different user yet. Perfect. That is what, because now you do, when I add a second user, you may get that option in there, but that still doesn't do that slash domain in there, right? It's going to just show the computer there. It's just not going to give you any other option. Um, another option, another uh, question that I got from live training yesterday, a user told me, and it was pretty cool what I would say, people will ask you, can you can, how would you log in, if, if I put this computer on domain, how would you log in locally to this computer? Anybody knows? Uh, domain backslash username and then what is, a what is, what is a domain when you say domain backslash what what are you going to put in there um so it would be like your job skill share uh backslash uh username that is in the directory already um and the so computer that's, that's be, a domain that's your login in as a domain user if i say locally log into this computer then instead of domain what are you going to put dot backslash yeah okay that may work but sometimes that also doesn't work what do you need to put exactly is the computer name computer name dc whatever that is right computer name slash local user and password right then it will let you log in to that local why would you need that if your domain is stopped working if a user is complaining now they have some really high sensitive data 
if domain is stopped working, they cannot log into that computer, right? You need to somehow log into that computer, right? So you do need to have your own local uh, accounts, which a company will have one standard account. And then we use some automation tools. It goes out there and changes password, which is a little advanced. Stuff, but if you work for a smaller company, they'll just have one password and they'll just save it somewhere, okay? Okay, so we're gonna log in first and we're gonna create a domain controller right now. Now, is, you guys, uh, have you guys seen this before, creating a domain controller environment, or uh, is this the first time? I've seen it before. Oh, you've seen it before, okay. So we will kind of do the same process here, but we'll do it in a lab method. We're not gonna spend so much time just to create a real domain domain, like, you know, we're, gonna, we're not gonna sit down and uh, do like a, full documentation on it usually that's how people would make domain controllers when they sit down they'll create a whole structure infrastructure backups all that kind of stuff we're not going to do that we're just going to stick to the lab um information here so the first thing as a ceo assigned to me as a system administrator that say hey gene is going to be joining the company uh dale is going to be so you know the ceo assigned me a, 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 like a uh okay so they assign, they assign this, like, you know, uh, this task to me that Gene, Dale, these people we are hiring and they're going to be supporting other people. So go ahead and create a domain. Controller. So the first thing I'm doing right now is I'm creating a domain controller by going to manage. I'm going to click on add roles and then I'm going to click next. Now, every time you make a domain controller, even in your lab environment, you know, you need to make sure that you have a real name like DC 300. Don't use generic names that just when you install a computer. That way it's a little easier. And in real environments, you're gonna have a static IP address. In lab environment, we don't care about that. So we're just gonna click next here. So if you guys tell me if I wanna install a domain controller, does anybody know which option I need to pick over here? Network controller. What's that again, sorry? Network controller. So here, check this out. You're going to use Active Directory Domain Services. So before you join a company, this is what happens, right? They add this domain controller. So here on the right side, you see Active Directory Services ADDS store information about objects on the network and make this information available to users and network administrator. ADDS uses domain controller to give users access permitted resources anywhere on the network, right? So that is what we're doing. As soon as we click on that, then server said, oh, you need to have more features in there. So it will automatically pick those features and we're gonna click next, click next, and here we're just gonna install it. So right now we're installing a domain controller on DC300 and it will take a second. And while this is doing, you guys can ask me questions. So, in, uh, except Dale and Gene, and anybody else there? Like, there are you guys watching this? Yeah, I'm here. I'm yes. watching. Okay, yeah. I just want to. I just want to make sure you guys are not sleeping out there. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> nah. So, uh, yeah, if you guys have any other questions while these type of like installations are going on, just feel free to ask me. How does a so with the Active Directory? Um, how does it work with the DNS? So basically, with the Active Directory, the DNS part is like if you work in a real company, you have your own DNS server that comes with Active Directory. A lot of people back in the days used to have their own DNS servers, but then they find out that computers are very powerful these days. You know, virtualization took over, and you can give like you know. CPUs on the fly, RAM on the fly. So <clears throat> they will use two domain controllers and usually the naming convention for that would be DC1 and DC2. So that also serves your DHCP, DNS, and Active Directory from same computers. So if one in goes... A, in a big environment, in a very well-established company, you're going to have uh, maybe five or six domain yeah. controllers spread out throughout the nation, not just for working reason, but also for disaster recovery. 
right? So yeah. a lot of times, uh, you know, one domain controller is not enough. Obviously, it's not a best practice, but if one goes down, the work transfers over to the next one. If that one goes down and, you know, so on and so forth. So, and with that, what you said, DNS server, uh, that's a bit advanced along with the DHCP stuff. But you, you as a technician won't have to deal with most of it. You may have to troubleshoot like, let's say, ping a web server, things like that. But that would be for a network engineer level people. So um, Yeah, like if there's an issue with the DHCP not assigning an IP address, that wouldn't be your call. You would just straight up uh, assign, send that to your sysadmin that, you know, oh, you know, I'm getting an, a, a message that, no IP available or that machine is not even getting an IP address. So you tested it from different machines. Now that's more like troubleshooting skills that we teach, but you would go open up different computers, open a Wi-Fi if you have a company and then nobody's getting in. You clearly knows that this is an overall uh, spread out issue. Um, so this could be one of your domain controller having memory issues because one of my examples I can give you, let's say DC2 uh, was out of memory. Some, something happened to it. So whoever at that point was connected to DC2 and that all of these people were having issues. Now, how did how to fix that issue was that because virtualization, like I said, made our job really easy now, I went to the, you know, the DC2 and I saw the alert and I, okay, I, there's a memory, clearly a memory issue is hung. All I did is that just, uh, you know, shut down the domain controller DC2 and change the memory to, let's say, 16 GB, right? And then when I turned it on again, everything was good to go people need to restart the machine, but that still fixed the issue after that. So yeah, there's a lot of issues that can happen. If, if one goes down, then the other should take over, but if somebody's already connected to it, they need to restart the machines basically. So now this, this, installation, this installation is done. We need to promote this domain controller right now. This is like the step that you need to do to make sure that this becomes a domain controller. So we need to click on this little icon here. And then after that, if we are creating a first time domain controller, we're gonna create a new forest. So that's the first domain, main primary domain controller that you're creating. In a company, this will be the first one. Then later on, you can add the other domain controllers to it. So let's say you have a remote office. The remote office will be using the other ones, like you know, add a new domain to an existing forest, and you can even use the other one too, like controllers. The controllers will be just doing a smaller job. So that's how you can spread out your domain controllers throughout the nation, if that's something you're doing. And that's where sysadmin skills will come in, okay? Now here's, remember, you guys saw that domain name in that picture. This is where it gets defined. So that's why I like to show this lab because then you know where it's coming from. So in your lab, we're going to use JSS9 because I already assigned a lot of JSS numbers to other members. So I'm going to use JSS9 and we're going to do job skill share. And we're going to click next here. So once we do this, after that, it will ask you for this recovery password. You guys don't need to worry about this stuff. This is something, like I said, sysadmin will be working on. If, the do if your domain controller goes down and something happens to it, then you, need, you have a recovery uh, from this type of thing. And here's a DNS question. Domain controller cannot work without a DNS. Active Directory cannot work without DNS. So you need that first DNS if you're using that first time installation. Then later on, you can change things. But you need that DNS for this installation, right? So it will automatically install it. Without this, you cannot even install um, um, the Active Directory on this machine. Now, NetBIOS is very important for help desk people. And that's why I like this screen because every time you go and help users out, think about this. You're gonna get a call. Uh, I need to install this software. And when, you, when they double click on the software, they get a prompt, right? You cannot install it because you don't have permissions, right? So they usually have this box in there. In that box, then you need to use something like this. JSS9 slash whoever is the admin or the user that we have added to Active Directory and then the password. A, a lot of people, a lot of people forget this option and then they think about what do I need to put in this whole, I, if they put help this, that, uh, the password, sometimes it works if they have done correct DNS stuff. If it doesn't, if doesn't work, then they will have tr uh, trouble. So you will, you will need to type JSS9 slash help this. What if you have, your company have different type of domain working uh, and somebody is remotely coming into your office and now you need to uh, uh, log in with a different account. So you're going to use JSS10 slash help this password, right? Understand this and we'll do a, a practice on this too. 
So we're going to click next here. And after that, we are just going to click next and next. And after that, we're done. It's just going to throw some errors, which is fine. This is normal in Active uh, Directory. These are yellow icons. And we are going to install our domain controller. And after that, you guys will log into your machines and you will perform some actions. So you see that waiting for DNS installation. So right there, it's, it's uh, telling you that we need to have a DNS. So while that's happening, and it's going to get restarted and everything, let me ask you the same question. Can anybody tell me, is this on domain controller? If I do send all control delete, is this on a domain? Is this a connected to domain controller? Like is a domain connected machine or not? Yes. Yes. Yes, that's how you figure out because that's an interview question for you guys right there. Mm -hmm. Technical interview question. If you cannot just say that this is so simple, then that's where people will know that you don't know too much about the domain connected environments and that's gonna be hard for you to then move on, okay? So then we will log into this domain controller now and this is where the thing starts actually this is where you get to come into the company now the first time when you are getting into the company somebody has to set you up right you can't just automatically go there and turn on the machine and, and bam you're on somebody actually let you access the active directory and you have more access rights permission rights than other people right and that's where I'm going to define that right now I'm going to do it at the very high level but of course, people can really, really go into it a little deep. So if you guys, if I open this server right now, and I want to just make sure that you guys know about Active Directory, which a lot of people should, and they, even though you don't have server knowledge, but they still expect you to know where the Active Directory is coming from, where would I click to get to the Active Directory stuff? Uh, there's the rules on feature. Uh, where? Are the rules on feature? Yeah, tools. So yeah. guys, you guys will click on tools right here, and then you see the Active Directory users and computers option just got enabled. Before, you didn't have this option, right? Yeah. So before, we didn't have this option. So now if I click on Active Directory users and computers, you see our Active Directory will open up. Now you see the domain right there that we just created on the left side? So this is our domain that we have created. But look what happened. By default, it created few folders. Now, another question people can ask you, can you, by looking at this screen, can you tell me what is the difference between a folders right there? There are some difference in that folder. Look at it very closely. Can somebody point that out to me? One has a access control, meaning you have a password and other access. So yeah, it's kind of like, right, but it's a, it's a difference between folders. So the folder, if you look at it, there's a dot on one folder. That says domain controller, right? So if I create a folder, this is basically our organizational unit. So if I want to create something here, I'm going to right click and I'm going to basically go ahead and click on new and then I'm going to create organizational unit. So if I create this organizational unit, I'm going to call it staff, right? And you can call it whatever you want. But look, every time I create something, it's going to have that dot on it but there are other ones that don't have that on it. These are containers, okay? That comes automatically from Active Directory. The problem with that folder right there is you cannot apply group policy on it. Now, group policy is a different feature, which I basically explained that you can really, really tie people down. So you cannot be in that container group and then apply those type of policy. You, can, you have to create a different group, put users in there, and then apply all these policies on it, okay? Does that make sense to people? Yeah. Okay, so now if you look at it, we need to add you first. The first thing I want to do is I want to create and help this account for you guys now. Now, you, got, you all are on a work group computers right now. You don't have access to none of this stuff. But once I add you, after that, you will be able to start connecting those machines to your domain controller. To do that, I need to create one account, and I'm going to call it help desk. How do you create account in Active Directory? There are multiple ways. You can right click on the user 
and you can click on new and you can click on user you can right click in the white space click on new and then you can click on users you can click on this little dot right here this little icon and you can create a user so if I create a user right now I'm just gonna call it help this and I'm gonna call I'm gonna name uh, this is the account name so you guys have to remember this that every Hadi. time you, yes just use me as a example It'll be easier okay Hadi we'll use Hadi as a help desk right now so we're gonna create him a normal way of so now here's here's the information uh, All right, so he has to join later on. I'm sorry, I can, if new people come in, they have to join in later because this is we're too far there right now. So, so basically, if you see something like this, this is where uh, your help desk things will start. Like if you're trying to add an account, this is where people will tell you that, okay, in our company, we're gonna use a temporary password and you must check this first option because I don't want you to give people a temporary password without them changing it, right? If, if people have a temporary password and you don't do this, uh, then that's a security risk, right? Some people will not change it, trust me. A lot of people are like that. They're just like, okay, I don't wanna change my password. I don't care, it's, it's easy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it like that, right? So you use a temporary password, then change. The temporary password gets changed all the time because you don't wanna keep one password then, right? But in this example, since we're doing lab, we're just gonna uncheck it. Later on, you guys will, will add more. So we're gonna click next here and we're going to Click on finish. Sorry, actually we didn't add a password in here. Oh, we're just finishing it. Okay, guys, so the password that I'm gonna use over here, everybody note this down to yourself because this is gonna be important for you guys to join your computer to domain. So you can, can you all see my notepad? Yes. Mm -hmm. So let's go to the fonts and I'm gonna make it bigger so all of you can see it. So guys, use this password. So dollar and and so I'm gonna use that, copy that. I'm gonna put it right here. Now you guys are not doing anything right now. You're just watching it that I just created a user. You guys will need it when you try to join this machine to your domain because now this help this is you, right? The Hadi person is you right now, right? And actually I need to change this name to Hadi because that's gonna confuse you guys. So the account name is Hadi, and the account login is Hadi. Now if you guys look at this process that I did, did I make a domain admin or domain user? Domain user. User, user right. To make some, to give somebody more rights, what do you need to do? You have to add it to the admin group. Admin group, right there, good, good answer. So where are the admin groups? Look at the users. These are the admin groups right here. These are the super, uh, users right here that you have right here like domain admin enterprise admin and that's where like I said an admin can come here create more groups and refine access based on the group policies a little bit advanced stuff but that's where they can create a total new group help this and put you guys in there and then you will have certain limit uh, access level of rights in there so that should answer one of your first questions and how does this work right so this is how it works so if I want to make you guys an administrator of this domain what do I need to do I need to go to properties and I need to click off member off right and then you see right here it says that it's a domain user so if somebody call you tomorrow that hey I want to find out if this person is an admin or not how would you find out you're gonna click on properties you're gonna to go to the group and then you will find out if this person is a domain or not or you can straight go to that group and find who are the users of that group right so now if I type domain admins, then we just created Hadi a domain admin. So we just gave him a superpowers now. Any machine in that network can using that Hadi name now can they can join in, join their machines to that domain right now. Before doing that, let me quickly show you that what I was talking about, the group, you can double click on the group and you can see the members and look where Hadi is now. Hadi is in there. That's an easy way for you to find out if the person is a domain admin or not, right? So, this is what I want you guys to do first. Because this is a lab environment, because this is a lab environment, we need to find, we need to make sure we, we connect, we need, to, we, we need to make sure that we connect 
your machine from DNS level to this domain controller. In our lab environment, we don't give DNSs out like, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, like that. You basically point your machine to this DNS like forcefully. How do you do that? The first thing, if I want to find an IP for a, for a machine, what do I use? As you guys know? IP config slash all. You can do IP config all or just IP config, right? Mm -hmm. You can do CMD. Now, guys, if you guys don't know this, now this is a little bit out off the training. If you don't know this command, I can guarantee you if somebody asks you in the interview, you're 90% not getting the job. This is too basic, okay? IP config is like the core of commands that you guys need to know. So if you don't know this, then there's something really big missing, right? So IP config, what is our domain IP address? Can somebody tell me the IP address? Uh, it's 192.168.10.206. If I ask you, what is 192.168.10, what is that? It's a uh, 192.168, it's a class C. Class C, and that's a network address, right? Yes, a network address. What is 206? 206 is like the host. The host, perfect. Good answers. So that is what people are going to test you on basically in a help desk level interview job, right? Yeah. So, so now we have the IP address 206. What are you going to do now? You guys will go to your machine and I'm going to pick one machine and help somebody out here. Who do I want to take over? Some, uh, maybe, maybe 300A. Is that fine with you? Okay. Okay. So 300A, guys, watch my machine now. You guys are doing this part now. You will right click on your machine or just go to the machine directly and then go to the desktop. Now, if Ola is having issue, you can simply click on it and go to the desktop on the top and then connect to the machine. You should be already connected. Yes. What I want you guys to do is to change your IP address, force it to that domain controller by right clicking on the network. Look, look at my screen, right click here. Okay. Go to open network in internet settings. And once you go open the network settings, go to click on Ethernet. Now there are multiple ways of doing this, but I'm just kind of taking you guys with different routes. Change adapter option. Are you all on this, this section right now? I want to make sure that all of you are on this right now. Anybody's, anybody's behind or anybody can't see this. Uh, I'm gonna mute a few people here just to make sure that we have the cleaner. So if you guys wanna unmute, unmute yourself. But everybody is on network and adapter. So I'm just gonna wait for 30 seconds and then I'll move on, okay? So while you guys are doing that, let me check on you. Connect. So B is okay. Uh, C, I'm not sure if I signed that one. C is not there. And some people are ahead. That's great. F, okay. So let's go back to 300 and move on. So if you're not there, just let us know. Right click here and go to properties. And Idlib, I'm going to have you take over now. IPv4, click on IPv4. Go to properties and Idlib, go ahead and type the domain IP address in there. I'm not sure if he's listening. Oh, Husni. Husni, can you hear me? Oh, there, okay, that's good. 192, 168. Ten, yeah, you, you're putting a wrong IP address there. Change one sixty nine to one sixty eight. If you do a mistake right here, then in in our lab environment, you won't be able to connect to your domain controller. It does give you some good information though, like errors and things like that, which is good. Uh, so here you're gonna type one sixty eight ten, and our domain IP address is what? Let's go back three. It's 206. 
man, two or six. Thank you. My memory is pretty bad. I think I got uh, I got pretty burned out from my last training. So I think Majid already know this. <laughs> <laughs> Majid, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that you're still alive. Yeah, I'm here. I'm listening to, I'm, you know, grab, grasping all the information. So 206 is the one that you guys need to put. And then the second alternative route, uh, alternative uh, space, put 88888. Now we do this for, just for internet reason. So that's nothing like you, that's nothing you guys need to learn from this right now. Because usually in a company, this will be automatically done for you. You don't have to go to each computer and try to do this. Like I said, in a company, there will be a DNS set up for you. you all you do is just turn on the machines and IP address gets assigned. DNS gets assigned. That's a sysadmin job right there, and you are good to go. So let's go back to 300A, and we want to make sure that everything is good. Uh, all right, so can I take over uh, uh, Husni? So this way we are a little bit faster here. 192, 168, and then 10, 206, right, Majid? Yes. And then we're going to put 8, 8, 8, and 8 here, and then just say OK and close it. So now, if you join the company and they give you a machine, let's say any machine, there's a client machine. Here you go, guy. You, you said that you are a help desk. You said that you have six months experience. You said that you went to job skills share. You got the training, and we're going to give you the job. No problem. Here's a machine. Go ahead and put it on a domain because a sysadmin already gave you a username and a password. What is the username? Hadi, right? And the password is the one that I gave you guys. And I'm gonna put it up again. If you guys don't know the password, let me know because we need to, right now we need to do a step-by-step -step process, okay? So here, this is the password and this is the username. I wanna make sure everybody get this. So just write it down so I'm gonna move out of this machine then. Actually, I'm gonna open another tab here. Okay, guys, now, how many of you know already how to join a computer to a domain? Anybody knows? Can you guys do it? Anyone, anyone wants to take a lead on joining a computer to a domain? Uh, Rodney? Yeah, I can try. You try. All right. Let's go. What, what are you? 300 B, C? Uh, B. Let's go to Rodnell. So, Rodnell, you got to also give us little, little explanations too, like how are you doing this, okay? Okay. So, basically, I, do, I, I go to computer uh -huh. and properties. Actually, let me make it a little bigger so people can see that. There you go. So, how did you go again? Sorry, one, one more time. Uh, yeah, I just go to to my computer, this computer here, and then click on properties. Okay. And change setting. Perfect. Then where do you go? Uh, yeah. I, after the, to. Oh, I change. Perfect, perfect. Good job. Remember, and what's the what's the domain domain again? JSS nine dot jobscare dot org. JSS nine dot dot. There, you're putting a full domain name here, right? Yeah. So we're gonna put uh, a full domain. Job skill share. Dot org. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So here's the prompt that I was talking about that you guys will see all over your headless, however many years you spend in there. So you're going to get this prompt a lot. So you need to know how are you going to put that username and password here now. So to use that, you're going to use what? JSS9 forward slash, which is a slash above your enter key. 
the slash above it. There you go. And you're going to put Hadi. That's the username. Remember, if you were to use, if you were to join this to this work group computer to that domain, you need, that person needs to be a part of that domain, right? You can't just automatically, nobody can just come in, just start adding things on the domain, right? You need to be a part of that, domain, right? Yeah. So that's the access level that we're talking about. You're given that access. Now he's able to do that. So let's go ahead and put the password that I shared with you. Uh, the password is e -A -S -S. Now this is the password that I created now, right? Yeah. But my guy right now. Hopefully I tap it right. Welcome to the perfect man. Good job. You just uh, did it. Oh, so, right, thank you. <laughs> so here you go, guys. This is how you join a computer to domain, and this is kind of like the job that you do. This is a ticket. You got you assign you just did one part of the ticket. You assigned it. The computer is where now? This computer got taken over now, right? Yeah. Got taken over by the domain that I have here. If I show it to you guys, if I then we'll go back now. How do you find out if that computer is now part of this domain? How do we find that? In Active Directory, where do I need to go? Uh, you have to go on computer to see if it's in the computer. Perfect. So 300B, good job. 300D, good job. A, A probably is having uh, other people. What's going on here? Let, let us know. What is, what is the issue so other people can learn from you? Anybody's having issue right now? I'm trying to add the name. Where do I go to? What are, what are you again, E? Yeah, E. All right, let's go back in here. So when you come here, basically after yeah, I'm there right now. Uh -huh. So here, you're gonna click on change settings. Okay. In change settings, you're gonna click on, on the bottom change. Bottom option change. You see that, uh, Ola? Yeah. So click, click on change. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see. Sorry. Anyway. No problem. All right, now you're going to click on domain. Okay. And now here you're going to type JSS9 dot job skill Yep. JSS what? JSS9 uh -huh. dot job skill share dot org. Uh, dot 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 you're forgetting the dot so you have to put the dot in there go back dot uh -huh. jobskillshare.org there you go org and now click ok okay ah you got an error guys can somebody tell me what is what is she doing wrong over there Anyone? Domain name? I think you forgot one step here, like the IP address. Did you do that part? Yes, I did that part. Okay, so let's let's figure out what, what why is this happening. So if you come here, 300E right now, you're on 300E, right? So we're gonna come here, we're gonna go to open, and we're gonna go to ethernet. We're gonna go to change adapter. I click right. on that. Properties. Yeah, I think before. All right. So what's what's the issue over here, guys? On the preferred DNS, she should have put a uh, one ninety two. Oh, she chose a static IP address. Yes, yes, yes. So Ola, you are putting an IP address in the wrong place. That's a that's a that's an IP address where. So basically, a DHCP works like this. We have a network. We automatically gives you IP address, right? Mm -hmm. And that first option right here, which you guys are seeing, if I open it again here, the first option shouldn't change because we are giving you this from our server, like from a network. Okay. Get that IP, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. The option that you need to change is this one, 192, 168, Same. 10, Same. and what is the IP? 206. 206, got it. And then here you're gonna put 888. That's the Google DNS just for internet mm -hmm. reason. We want you to route towards that. That's fine. We're gonna click OK, close it. And now if you go back to your Active Directory, 
I click OK, and now if you click OK, what happened now? You see, you got the okay. password. So here you're going to type JSS9 forward slash slash is right above your enter key. Slash. The other one, the other one. The other one. Uh, so it's right. This one right here. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it right here. Oh, sorry. Oh, what happened here? All right, let's go back to that change. Domain. So can I can I ask a quick question? Yes. So when you change the IP address, what 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 is that process called? When I change the IP address, hold on, let me. Um, what do you mean by like the process? So meaning, um, how does changing the IP address enable you to uh, add a domain or like join a domain? Okay, so when we created the Active Directory on that server, we also created a DNS server in it, right? It has mm -hmm. that automatically got created, right? right? So, but if you look at it in the lab environment, you are connecting from a different network, right? right. So the IP addresses that are, you are getting has a this is a different DNS that's giving you internet connection. That's why you're are getting to this lab, right? right? But we are forcing your machine to go back to the domain controller we created. So to force that machine to talk to our domain server, lab domain server, you need to put that IP address basically. So every time you have some type of, let's say, issue going on with the computers, you can actually go to that IPv4 settings and you can put static IP addresses so then it doesn't change. You can force your computer to go to our one route or another route, right? Yeah. So that's where if you want to talk to this domain controller, you want to be a part of this domain controller, you want to practice, then you need to force your machine to talk to that domain controller by DNS or yeah. else in our lab environment if you just say without doing that it will it will say that okay I don't find this machine because I already have a different DNS and that doesn't have this information in there it, that DNS don't have any information about that machine right okay all right so now we're gonna put Hadi in here and, and all of the password that I created just go ahead and type that and basically um, from that uh, from that machine try to create a folder in there. Like, you know, try to just create some folder and we wanna do some sharing information here. We wanna see if, how can you guys now put, uh, uh, get to shares or share some stuff with us, you know, and that, that is also connected to your Active Directory stuff, okay? So on your desktop, create a folder and just uh, name it something in there and then I will just go over it quickly. So while you guys are doing that, I'm going to create a share on the domain controller right here. So I'm going to do it in C drive. And if you guys are watching my screen, you guys can do the same thing. I'm just going to C drive and go to folder. And here I'm just going to type share. <clears throat> so how much do you guys know about sharing between a server and sharing inside a desktop like what is the difference between these two if I want to share a folder on the server how is that different sharing a file on a desktop when you share it on a server multiple users can have access to it so you think yeah. desktop won't have multiple access? I think the desktop, if you uh, create it on a desktop, then it would just be a local uh, folder. No. If I, let's say, in, in the domain environment, you're on a domain environment now, right? Mm -hmm. So if you share, what is your machine name? Uh, what is your lab name, sorry? I'm, I'm, coming, uh, I'm watching from my phone, so I wasn't able to. Oh, yeah, yeah, you don't have lab. Sorry. So let's say, for example, if I jump into 300 A lab, and if you're watching the phone, if you come here, oh, he's actually joining this to domain. So if I do 300 B, whoever is 300 B, can I just uh, take over? Yeah, sure. Okay. So if I come here, and let's say, for example, I'm going to open a new, uh, new folder area right here. Just, just going to go here. And if I go to C drive, and if I double click here, and I click create a new folder here, right? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's my got stuck. Okay, 
if I get a, if I say share right here. Oh, I already got a share one. Oh, you already have one. Okay. Yeah. Let me. Oh, you okay? Right. When I right click on it, I'm gonna go to properties. I'm gonna click on sharing, and here if I click on advanced sharing. If I click on advanced sharing here. Now, to answer your question, again, look at the screen now and tell me how many people can log into that share. Up to 20. Up to 20. So, Gene, are you there? Yes, I'm here. You see, you see the difference, right? When you share from a desktop, up to 20 people can, can like, basically, all of them together can connect to this simultaneous connection, right? Mm -hmm. So if I do share here permission, I want to give permission to everybody. And let's say, hey, why would why did I do this? Because you need to learn about sometimes you will get a call, I want to share this information with somebody else in the Active Directory domain environment, right? Mm -hmm. So how would you find that? First, look at it. You are a part of the domain, JSS9, and then I can put anything, any number of users or domain users in here. Look, if I do that, then it's gonna ask me for username and password. And if this machine um, have access is you can just put the username and password and it will let you create that share right right okay so so to answer to answer your question here so uh, let me put somebody on mute here who is on that was gene I believe he, he muted himself anyway, okay great okay so guys you can unmute yourself so now this machine can let 20 people connect to this folder all at once, right? But if I do the same thing now to, to give you a little bit difference between these two machines, if I do the same thing on my domain connected or server, any server, if I right click on it, you guys watching it, right? If I do properties, yes. go to sharing, if I click on advanced sharing, look how much can server offer now. Look at the number. Isn't that huge? That's a huge number right there. One six seven seven two one six. That how many? So that's why people are using share in a domain connected environment from the server, not on the desktops. So if somebody come and say, "Hey, what would be the better way to share a folder?" you're going to always say, yeah, you're going to put it on the server if it's something that people need to be accessing it throughout the company. Another, yeah. reason, another reason you want to do it on the server is because of the space, uh, amount of space the server can have versus your local machine. And you don't want to overwhelm your local machine from all these connections. It's just going to slow your productivity down, which you don't want. <laughs> and the safest place would be a server because what if you shut your machine down? Nobody can access that folder, right? So the server is the place you want to put it with centrally controlled and located. Yeah, and, and this is where you're going to get a lot of calls too that I want to add this person to this share folder. I want to add that group to that share folder. So this is where Active Directory will come into play big time because you need to now create uh, groups in Active Directory. You need to know about your groups in the company. So if we go to the Active Directory environment right here, they will have groups out there, marketing, sales, uh, IT, whatever, whatever, right? So rather than you adding 300 people in one share, one by one, that's going to take you the whole night. Then you just come in straight, just go to that group, put it in that share, and everybody got access, right? So that's an actual call for you guys, that you're going to get a call. Hey, I need you to add this group into Active Directory. How do we do that? Okay? So now what we're going to do is I'm going to create a, a normal user now. And we will test that normal user, and we'll log into your machines. And we'll see this some kind of differences between passwords and you know login and stuff like that how would you log in as a user and then you see things right there okay well first let's create a new user here so I'm going to create a, a new user in uh, actually before doing that I, I forgot I, you guys need to be doing this so you you all are logged into your help this machine right now right as a as a as a hardy machine right but what I want you guys to do is this log into your machine and I'm gonna double click and open up your Chrome. So, so the thing is this, that if you guys can help me out, if we have an Active Directory, would it be a good option to let Hubdesk log in directly to the server and manage this stuff? No, use RSAT tools. 
RSET tool. There you go. So we need to download RSET tool in the help this machine. And then we need to connect that RSET to the Active Directory. Then from there on, you need to log in with your machine. You have the Active Directory right there in your machine. And then you basically manages everything there, right? Right now, I'm as a system administrator directly managing it. But when you join a company, you need to do this stuff for yourself or they, will, they would have done it for you already. So, so there are multiple ways you guys can get R sets. Some machines comes built in now with that feature. So you go to the program features and you get it. But this is, a, this is kind of like a trial version and we downloaded it earlier. So I'm sure this will not have it. So how do you download it? I'm going to go to download option and we're going to download it here. So if you guys, if I'm too fast for you, you will get the recording and then you will basically watch it and do it, okay? So if I wanna find out the version of this window, which may not match, but let's find out, you're gonna to go to system. And if you go to the system here, it's taking a second. The one in the back. Are you guys having the same issue here? Well, we're gonna go for this one, the 803. If you guys are having some type of issue that is not coming up like a system, that, that pop-up screen, then maybe restarting a machine would be a good idea, but I wouldn't wanna do this in the lab right now. Of course, that's just gonna delay us. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, download a 709 first. Now, there, there are other ways you can find just typing the version name in the CMD and find the version, but I'm using an enterprise version that is a trial base, so that's not going to work for a lot of you because most of you guys are using professional version or home version, I think, in your uh, at home. Most of the people don't buy enterprise, but enterprise is kind of like, even in companies, it's an expensive license, and a lot of schools or people they want to buy it that if they don't want these applications like side loaders type of application if they don't want that they will go for enterprise version and in that also there's different versions in there that people use in there okay yeah all right so i think we're having issues with you is anybody else having the same uh problem where you're clicking on something it's not coming up All right, let's check if the other people. So let me know guys, if you guys all are having some issues, then I think we have some problem here. Yeah, train that started from the downloads folder. It's just uh, spinning. Okay, maybe. It's... So, uh, other thing about this stuff is that why would this type of things happen, um, you know, in a computer? Because remember, you guys are using a virtual environment, and let's say it's a 64 GB RAM server, and if a lot of people are on it and people are downloading things, the memory of that server is screaming right now. Of course, in future training, we can make it up it up, and based on this training, but that's how, in a real world, that's also that's what happens, right? You have many people are working on things, and then as a system administrator, you need to up that memory, you need to up the CPUs for servers to be running pretty nicely. But that's another thing you guys will be learning in your um, uh, IT career about virtualization. So it's very important, and that's something Majid spent five days with us and another member to learn about those type of things too. If Majid is here, maybe he can talk about his experience a little bit, but if he's available right now. I'm not sure if he's uh, on right now. Majid, are you there? Yeah, I can see his name, but maybe he's not. So, so anyways, guys, so this is gonna basically, what is it gonna do? It's gonna download, just like the Active Directory you guys see on the domain controller, just like that, it's not downloading a domain controller, it's like an add-on, right? It's like in your machine, there is now a system where you can connect Active Directory 
group policy, DNS, and as a sys administrator or a help desk person, you have your own machine to manage Active Directory from your access. So you don't have to log into the server all the time. So people will ask you in the question, in the interview question, what is our set tool? So the good thing for you guys will be to just go, go to documentation and read something about our set tool. Maybe go some YouTube videos, watch that. Um, if you're a premium member, we also give you practice labs and that you have all the labs about A plus and that teaches you all that stuff. So there's a lot of ways you can learn about it. And the first thing you should go to the Microsoft site and just know what is our set, right? So that's where, at least you, when somebody asks you a question, how do you manage Active Directory from your machine? It's just like uh, Rodnell gave me an answer. That was a quick answer right there. That's, that's all I'm expecting to know. Like, okay, yeah, this person knows about this too, right? Yeah. So while this is happening, let's just move on to the Active Directory stuff and just quickly talk about some of the other things and then we will round it up. And of course, later on, we may add more things into these labs and you guys will watch the videos in that too. Now, if I ask you guys, do you guys want me to give you this access for next, let's say, few hours and let it on? Can you, do you guys want to work on these labs or how do you guys want to do it? I'm, I'm okay with that. If you, if you guys want to... If you guys I, have a, I have a question about that software we're downloading now. Uh huh. So is it is it like a software pretty much like Citrix? Because usually I use Citrix to get access to Active Directory. Um, yeah, it's kind of like Citrix, uh, but it's more defined for a lot of management inside the Active Directory. So let me show you quickly here. Okay. But Citrix might not be giving you the same level of uh, you know information what our site is giving you, right? So here, if you look at it. This is our domain right here, right? All we are doing right now is this. You see, guys, if you guys come here, this information right here, Windows Administrative Tools right here, if I click on it, it will open up this folder, right? All these, these, uh, these are like different applications, right, inside this, this Administrative Tools, right? Yeah. The R set that you're installing is exactly on the other machine. You're just installing this feature. Now, in this server, it already installed it for you when we did the Active Directory, right? Yeah. Now, in, in that machine, the help desk machine, you're installing this piece right there. So then you will basically log in by just clicking exactly the same way administrator tools will come up and you will see Active Directory users and management just like this. And you're going to open it up and then you will be able to connect to the domain control, right? Okay. Good. So that, and the, the reason it's more than Citrix because I'm not sure if Citrix will give you group policy management like this, which you open up right now from there. I don't think Citrix will do that. I, I don't know too much about that. Okay. So if you open this up, you can see you are in the same domain and there's a group policy. And this is what we were talking about after when we, uh, like the basic stuff is like in Active Directory is that you, you, you add a user, you delete a user, you add their permissions and stuff. So if I quickly go over this stuff before we end this meeting. So you see like here, like if, I, if Hadi is a user, what else can you do with Hadi? Every time Hadi calls you about a lockout password, where do you where do you go? You go to the same place, right? Yeah. And you're gonna click on properties, and here you're gonna click on account, and here is a Hadi account is being locked out or not locked out, right? Yeah. If they call you that my account is locked out, you're gonna go to the account and unlock it. That's a ticket, right? Mm -hmm. You just got a call, you unlock them, ticket closed, done. Your job is over, right? Yeah. If if Hadi gets married, Hadi said that I just married to someone and I need to change my last name. Now, male and female, some countries do change their last names. I don't know, right? So let's say Hadi's a male. He wants to change his last name. Then he's going to come over here. Oh, what kind of man changes last name? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we don't know, man. Come on. So, so the thing is this, that you're going to come here to the first name, last name, and you change. Remember, we're talking about that office information, numbers, and everything. This is where it comes from, right? right? You're going to type the office information and that's a call for you. That's a help desk call that I need to move this person to that office. Now, automatically, things are not going to happen. You're going to come here and change the office numbers, right? Yeah. If they're using Active Directory for this stuff, they may be using inventory systems that we also teach. That's a different story right there. Maybe different using a different software right there, right? But again, if, if Hadi needs to be added to a different group, then what do you do? You go to members of and you just add him to this uh, group right here, right? If Hadi yeah. needs to change the title, Hadi becomes a CEO of this company now. And what do you do? You're just going to go and click on job title, department, company, and who's the manager? You put the manager in there. So think about just by right-clicking and going to the properties, how many calls can you create for yourself as a practice? Like, you know, if you're doing a practice, how many 
calls can you create for yourself right now by watching this? Probably 10 or 10, more than 10, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And these are regular calls. 40% of the time, I'd say you work on Active Directory. I got locked up. I changed password. Uh, I want to change the password. Um, help me with the title. Help me with the name, right? So very basic stuff right here, but at least this is what you do at the entry level position. You don't need, you don't need to, a lot of people think that this is something too technical that I need to learn. Think about this as a process, a business process, and you just have to do it repetitively, right? So that's kind of it for the user side of it. Of course, there's a big feature that you guys be always be using is a search. And every time I help people and they say, I cannot find a user, right? So I tell them just one thing, just go to search and change this user folder to entire directory. And when you do entire directory, what happens? It search all over your Active Directory. So sometimes people mistakenly move users to a different OUs, right? And now their search is on user and then they're stressing out that they can find the person, right? So what you do is you change the entire directory and boom, you got the user right there. And then you can move that person to the right department by right clicking on it you can move everybody to another place right all tasks you can move right here if somebody call you for resetting a password what do you do simply right click and reset a password here and how do you make them log uh, change their password next time you click on that check mark and unlock their account if they're locked and then that's it you solve the issue any question about this stuff did the install finish we can uh actually connect our set to the directory yes yeah, it's done. is it done on 300b yeah it's done it's done okay so now so if the r set installation is done correctly which i kind of blindly did it um then what you need to do you need to come here and look for administrative tools right here you're gonna click on that in control panel and look what happened there you are in the help this uh you're in the help this uh machine right now right yeah. and you have active directory users and computers in your to manage to manage users and group use local user groups to manage user and groups user domain login so if you click on it this this account that we are on right now is local account i believe so if i click here and to find out you can let's say sign out right now to manage now we we join this machine to the domain but we install our set on which which account anybody the local help desk local help desk and that's not the right account to use for this stuff once you join a computer to a domain we did a mistake by logging into a local help desk account so that's still a local access right there you want to be logging in to hadi's account right yeah that's true and that is where you when you click on it you're going to get that but um uh, somehow it's stuck right now hey danish uh -huh. if you install something on a local machine like local account uh-huh wouldn't that apply to the entire machine and any user logs in? Where to say that again? Sorry. If you install a software using a local account mm -hmm. and then a domain user login, mm -hmm. wouldn't that software be already on the machine? So based on what this software is about to do, right? So this software is on the local, everybody can see it, but then it uses your rights to connect to Active Directory, right? So that's why when this local account got on there, it, this local account didn't have rights to talk to the domain controller, right? It didn't, it, it, can, it cannot apply these rights on the domain environment, right? So that application is still there, but it's not working, basically. It tells you right there that, okay, you, your access is not what I'm looking for. You need to be a, an admin account, right? Or domain admin account, right? So sometimes when you even uh, install a normal application on a local machine, yes, it's like Firefox. Now those are different. That's a local type of applications. And even in some applications, it will tell you, do you want to install this for all users or do you want to install it for this one user? So it depends on application. 
Make sense? Yep. All right, guys. So 300B is giving us some issues. So what do we do here? If, I, if somebody asked me right now, like, okay, how do I troubleshoot this stuff? What would I do right here? Like, this is an agent. This is a web-based connection. How would I troubleshoot this? Anybody knows? You got to use the universal, universal answer. Reboot the machine. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, I spend, sometimes I spend like four hours or five hours on a, on a fixing a help desk environment. And then the, at the end, for, after four hours, the fix was just to restart a machine. So you don't want to be in that, in that scenario where you spend four hours and you say, okay, I could have just restarted this. Now, another thing going back to the ticketing system is that let's say you got a ticket from another technician and he didn't properly document it. And then you call the user say, hey, my name is, uh, my name is Hadi Wali. I'm, I'm calling because I have your ticket. It's been escalated to me. Um, what's the issue? And then, you know, the user explains. And then you're like, all right, why don't you go ahead and reboot the machine? And then user most likely will get mad at you because she or he will be like, you know what? The previous technician told me to reboot five times. It didn't work, blah, 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 blah. Now you'll be like, okay, why didn't he document that step, right? So a lot yeah. of times you just get frustrated because, you know, first thing a lot of IT technicians say, it's like, hey, reboot your machine, and then you go from there. So make sure you document whenever you're troubleshooting with, like, users, especially if they're VIP. And you will know they're VIP because your company will tell you they're VIP. So this issue was actually not a restart issue. This was the agent that is giving you the remote desktop connection. So 300B, if you're there, that was the issue right there. So okay. to fix this, uh, usually we work, uh, sysadmins and even help this guys needs to know a lot about services. Like all these applications that we're providing you or companies, they have some services running in these, these systems, right? So this application that we're using for remote desktop is called Mesh. So you just basically click on it and restart that application. And then after that, you see your machine is up and running, right? So our, our first mistake in that was, and we're gonna conclude after this, and if you guys have any questions after this, I will take it. So you see, if I log in to this machine, what do I need to use? I need to use Hadi's account. And can you log in, 300B, Rodnell, can you log in with that password? Uh, I feel like I forgot password. about it already. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot about it? <laughs> no, I got it. Oh, you got it, okay, go ahead. So, uh, what? Why is this logging in with the help? Desk? I thought we put Hadi in there. I will check it. It seems like it's a new account. Okay, guys, any question about uh, stuff that we have covered so far? Donish, the reason it's throwing help desk because when you created my account, you put my name as help desk. Ah, good, good job right there. I didn't know. Now you got to owe me some food. All right, I get you. I got you. All right, guys. Last thing, five minutes and we're done, okay? So here's the thing. You're going to get a call. And even though you guys, you guys are seeing group policy management on, in front of your screen, it, it's, not, it's, it's not an active directory thing, but how would you know when you get a call, let, let's say somebody call you, Hey, uh, my account, I'm trying my, like, you know, these two are connected right now. So if somebody's trying, let's say a password, four letters in there, ABCD, ABCD, let's say I want to, I want to use ABCD, right? And it's not working for them. Or let's say they're using only four characters, something very complex too, like they steric, whatever, whatever. Right. And it's not working for them and they're getting pissed off. now. they call you. They're like, Hey, I'm trying my password for the past four hours or of course they're not going to be four hours but let's say four minutes and they got pissed off and they call you how would you know this how would you know this information that okay they keep locking themselves out they need to know some information how would you know that what am i talking about find the user in uh 80 um i usually do a search on the domain because the list of us users is too large uh, check the properties uh -huh. and see if they're locked out. So that's, okay, that's the lockout issue. But what I'm saying is that if a user is using four letters or five, right, they keep using five and they're not moving up, right? 
they they somehow feel like that five is their password and they of course is they, they're locking themselves out but that's not working how would you know that information like who decide is five letters or ten letters or eight letters that you need to put in there who decide that and where would you find out so here's what happens like policies like you know how we name uh, 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 an account right this is a policy right we put a name right like Hathi right if I if I'm running a company I need to put a policy out there that the password has to be minimum of this much this many characters right so if somebody's putting a lower number than that of course they're locking themselves out it never will work right and if you as a hub just don't know about it is that a good thing or a bad thing pretty bad because you should know about it. If you go there and you spend another 40 minutes with the user and you're trying to like use their five characters, okay, let's try this, let's try this, and they're keeping that. You, 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 you're also not moving up. Then, if, then there's, a, there's something that you didn't, uh, there's a knowledge gap between uh, your policies, right? So how would you find out? You're gonna go to your group policies and you're gonna right click on domain policies. Now group policies are total different sessions, but these two are connected kind of like connected because now I'm going to prove it to you guys why you need to go to your group policy in the company and need to find this information. So you're going to go to the group policy, computer users, policies, and here you're going to type Windows settings. Keep disconnecting. Okay, here, let me go back. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to do Windows settings and it will open up the security policies. So are you guys watching this? Yeah. So if you look at security policies and account policies, Right here is the password policies that people need to set then, right? So if I double click on it, you see, these are my numbers right there. Are you guys seeing my screen? Yep. So if the password is less than seven characters, will that ever work? No. No. And that is where it's so important for you as a help desk to know this information, to know where to find out because you don't wanna be at the position where you spend another 20 minutes with a user and then you tell them, ah, it used to be, uh, it has to be seven characters. Like, how, oh, how are you an IT person that you didn't know this and I spent this much time? You see, they're gonna start that, that, you know, that gray area will, will be there then, okay? Because then you need to be a person who's kind of a little bit more, if you don't know, do research before you do, a, a, you take on a call. You don't wanna just straight up jump into the call, right? Because if you're so new, you need some information behind you, right? And that is where you're going to be having a stress-free type of uh, troubleshooting uh, you know, environment for yourself. You want to be more proactive. You don't want to be just reactive all the time. If you're proactive, you learn about this stuff, then you go there, you already have the answer. And you look good, you're stress-free, you know what the issue is. You tell the person, hey, you're putting a five characters, that's not allowed. You need to put seven or eight, right? Now, where do we decide that this many account time will, uh, if you type it this many times, it will get locked out. This is where it gets decided. So if, I, if you see account lockout policy is zero here, I can change this to let's say five, and I'm gonna come here, apply, and okay, and it'll change the other uh, numbers in there too. So if, if you can tell me somebody, if I tried my password wrong for six times, what will happen to me? Will lock your account. You will get locked out. And how would you unlock the person? How do you unlock the person? You guys just learned that. Yeah. You right click. Right click on user's name. Right click on username. Go to properties. Yeah. And then of course after that you click on account. And where's the unlock? It's right there. It says unlock account. Huh. And let me tell you something that when you start when you start a job that's what you're going to get probably like the uh, <laughs> I believe like after a few minutes or a day you're going to get this and of course then you don't want to be sitting there right so so this is kind of uh, um it guys so I think we spent a lot of times getting this time but of course we're going to be adding more stuff to it and more tools because I didn't actually cover almost half of it the, the tools that we usually use for this time and uh, of course in the future training we're going to start add more tools into it so you guys can always watch those videos then too to to kind of catch up on this but again 
Our Active Directory training starts from day one. So when we create a domain control, we don't just teach Active Directory in one day, right? It, ta it takes five days for us to complete the whole training. Uh, we're doing other trainings too, but at the same time, we're in an Active Directory environment. So we teach little by little, little by little, little by little. So the whole training conclude the Active Directory uh, with all these other type of trainings, right? So yeah, it's a pretty big thing, but for you guys, this is a good information to even tell somebody that I know about Active Directory. This is how I install our set rules. This is how I add people. This is how I reset password. This is how I change their titles. This is how I change their group information. So you see, right from just few, one or two hour of training, you can answer almost 10 to 15 questions right there related to Active Directory. So, so after this training, we usually get questions that how do I take a full training? Uh, of course, that training that you just saw on in this live training is just uh, setting up a domain controller and talking about things related to that Active Directory then going down to day two where we talk about uh, Active Directory and we only touched group policy at the end but there's more to do group policy and there are more to tools and scriptings and things like that of course that's just day two then we go to day three day four day five and that's where your life phase is done in a week or if you choose weekends that's four days divided into two weekends so it's a lot of work to do a lot of training and you do it hands-on then we basically give you lab sim test out access which is another hands-on simulation type of training where do where you get detail because here we we prepare you for more real world type of training you get very much a good confidence for going out there and looking for these jobs description applying and getting helped in the interview and things like that then of course you need to learn things now by going through the the test out uh, phase two you get more detail about the radical more of definition learning and then also doing it so then you see active directories cover drivers this partition volumes a lot of things that uh, we don't teach in the live training so it is even though it is hands-on it is kind of like important phase and that's why our training is not just uh, live training and you're done basically that's just phase one you're done because you broke all of the the barriers of like you know how to get into it how to start training for it that barriers is that barriers are broken in phase one now you're in phase two and then phase three we talk about your resume and how you're going to apply so it is going to take you time a lot of people ask me how much time does it take for me to to finish everything now of course phase two is something that you will continue to learn but after phase one, we start working on your resume and in a month and a month and a half, you're ready to apply to these jobs. And a lot of people have got a success out of this. So that is the whole complete story. You can see this is a pretty uh, lengthy process in a way that you have to be very committed. So if you want to become an IT professional, the commitment has to be there because not only for that commitment, also the money that you're spending, also the energy that is being spent on you and yourself that you're, you're coming to these training and of course you we want serious people uh, to be also uh, you know taking all that energy out of us it's a lot of effort into this so this is what we do in a live training so if you're interested in this type of training then of course you would go to jobskillshare.org you're going to click on instructor-led IT training this is kind of the service that we provide in instructor-led training only now we do have other options like premium memberships and other things but those are not complete that's like labs that you have to do things on your own so yes there are free courses there are incomplete courses you can take but it's not going to be like live training so you can you can pick here two options you can do it full payment save some money or you can do pay by monthly if you prefer that we have two options you can come here on weekday training or you can do two weekend training so if you're a, if you're a person who's working jobs and you want to do a relaxed training then you can take this option if you want to do it finish it off you want to be in the flow then take the weekday training and you can still see the details and how many people have took it on the examples you can see that but the example that we showed you in this training is the perfect example this is exactly what we teach in a live training but just more more days more hours more practice